हाइपर कैपनिया और हाइपर कर्बिया कॉजेस एंड ट्रीटमेंट हाइपर कैपनिया ऑल्सो कॉल्ड हाइपर कर्बिया एराइज फ्रॉम हैविंग टू मच कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इन द ब्लड इट टिपिकली हैपेंस विथ हाइपोक्सिया which is when there is not enough oxygen in the body it can lead to a headache dizziness and confusion hypercapnia happens when breathing problems make it difficult to take in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide it is typically due to a disease that affects the lungs symptoms can range from mild to severe and can include fatigue headache and confusion possible causes include the respiratory conditions chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or copd and asthma this video discusses symptoms and causes of hypercapnia and outlines some treatment options symptoms symptoms can be acute meaning they start suddenly and last a short while or they can be chronic meaning they last a long time people with chronic hypercapnia may also experience a temporary worsening of symptoms symptoms can range from mild to severe mild symptoms a person with hypercapnia might notice fatigue headache flushed skin shortness of breath nausea irritability these symptoms may arise from shorter periods of shallow or slow breathing such as during deep sleep the body can often balance carbon dioxide levels in the blood stream and correct the symptoms by itself however if symptoms persist a person should contact a doctor severe symptoms the symptoms of severe hypercapnia require immediate medical attention as they can cause long term complications some may even be fatal severe hypercapnia symptoms include confusion depression or paranoia anxiety nausea and vomiting seizure fainting loss of consciousness or coma panic attack arrhythmia cardiovascular breakdown a person may also experience other symptoms related to an underlying disease such as copd or asthma causes and risk factors here are some possible causes of hypercapnia copd copd is an umbrella term for several conditions that affect breathing common forms of copd include chronic bronchitis and emphysema chronic bronchitis leads to inflammation and mucus in the airways while emphysema involves damage to the alveoli alveoli or air sacs in the lungs Both conditions can cause increased levels of carbon dioxide in the blood stream. The main cause of COPD is long-term exposure to lung irritants. According to the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, cigarette smoke is the most common lung irritant that causes COPD in the United States. However, up to 30% of people with copd have never smoked some have a genetic condition in which the liver does not produce enough alpha 1 antitrypsin or aat alpha 1 antitrypsin is a protein that supports lung health having an alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency is a risk factor for copd development Air pollution and exposure to chemicals or dust may also cause COPD. Although not everyone with COPD will develop hypercapnia, a person's risk increases as their COPD progresses. Asthma. 
Asthma causes the airways to become inflamed and narrowed. It may impact breathing and the levels of carbon dioxide in the body when it is unmanaged. People with asthma have a higher risk of hypercapnia. Doctors do not know precisely why asthma develops, though it is likely due to a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Activities that can trigger an asthma attack include exercise and exposure to irritants, including cigarette smoke and air pollution. Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea can present as shallow breathing or pauses in breathing during sleep. It can affect oxygen levels in the blood and the body's balance of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Sleep apnea symptoms include daytime sleepiness, headache upon waking, difficulty concentrating, snoring. Nerve disorders and muscular problems. In some people, the nerves and muscles necessary for sufficient lung function may not work correctly. For example, muscular dystrophy can cause the muscles to weaken, eventually leading to breathing problems. Other disorders of the nervous or muscular systems that can contribute to hypercapnia include the following. Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which affects nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord. Encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain. Guillain-Barr syndrome, which can result from an unusual immune response. Myasthenia gravis, which is a chronic disease that can weaken the skeletal muscles responsible for breathing. Other causes. Other causes of high blood levels of carbon dioxide include activities that impact breathing including diving and ventilator use. COVID-19 in some people who use a ventilator. Brainstem stroke which can affect breathing. Hypothermia which is severe heat loss from the body that often occurs with hypercapnia and hypoxia. Obesity hypoventilation, which happens when having obesity makes it difficult to breathe deeply or quickly enough, according to older research. Drugs that can slow breathing such as opioids. Treatment. The treatment for hypercapnia will depend on the severity of the condition and the underlying cause. Options include ventilation. Ventilation is typically the first line of treatment for hypercapnia. A doctor may use non-invasive ventilation. Airflow comes through a mouthpiece or nasal mask. This is helpful for people with sleep apnea to keep their airways open at night. It is also known as Continuous Positive Airway Pressure or CPAP. Mechanical Ventilation A doctor will insert a tube through the mouth into the airway. This is called intubation. People with severe hypercapnia symptoms may need a ventilation device to help them breathe. Medication Certain medications can help manage breathing or address underlying problems. Antibiotics can treat pneumonia or other respiratory infections. Bronchodilators can open the airways. Corticosteroids can reduce inflammation in the airway. Oxygen therapy. People who undergo oxygen therapy regularly use a device to deliver oxygen to the lungs. Oxygen therapy can help balance the levels of carbon dioxide in the blood. 
lifestyle changes. To reduce symptoms and avoid complications, a doctor may recommend dietary changes, increased physical activity, quitting or avoiding smoking, limiting exposure to chemicals, dust and fumes where possible. Surgery Some people with lung or airway damage need surgery. Lung volume reduction surgery can remove damaged tissue. With lung transplantation, a surgeon replaces a damaged lung with a healthy lung from a donor. Prevention Methods for helping to prevent hypercapnia include treating existing lung conditions, quitting or avoiding smoking, reaching or maintaining a moderate weight, following an exercise plan, avoiding exposure to toxic fumes and chemicals.